Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and I am joined by the one, the only, Michael Morris. Mate, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. It's almost like it's been a day it, since I saw you last. It actually, precisely it, uh, Precisely a day. And it is great to be back. <laughs> if you haven't seen the videos that we were doing in Florida, we will link a playlist here. But today is a very special one. We're gonna be playing nine holes of stroke play here at Jupiter Country Club. But that is not all because this map next to me is one of the most impressive ball strikers I have played with for quite some time. So we're gonna delve deeply into that big golfing brain of his and tell you guys how to play scratch golf. That's pretty good, isn't it? That was nice. Yeah. That was very well. Yeah, accepted. nailed that, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should give yourself a I say, yeah, no, thank you, you know what, thank you. Oh, I love that. So guys, stay tuned, because over shots are gonna take a little bit more time, explain technique, explain reasoning to try and help you unlock your potential. An extra added bonus today, if you want to look at it like that, is it's blowing about 30 miles an hour. Mm. So if you do hear any noise on the mics, we apologize. There's very little we can do about the weather yet. So we have here par four to begin with. Yeah, it's a par four straight away. Uh, there's water on the right at like 280 yards. Probably going to be a little difficult to get there today, but it's pretty, what you see is what you get. Obviously right's better than left as far yeah. as missing. Me? Yeah. Me? Moi? Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Play well. Enjoy. When it comes to scratch golf, I mean, for any golfer of that matter, you probably, you're going to add, I don't even know how many strokes around, maybe three, four strokes around when the, the wind is blowing this hard. Um, I don't know the statistics behind that, but. Yeah, if we, uh, if either of us doesn't shoot level around this nine holes, I'm not even sure we'll be able to release this. Mm. So, no pressure. Whew. That's, yeah, we're talking 30 miles an hour wind, and this course is already tight as it is. <laughs> Take a little bit off this speed wise, just so I can keep that trajectory a little bit lower. Oh, sit. Oh, straight to the waist area. Did you Monty that? No, no, that was just a bad swing. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't matter how good of a golfer you are if you put a swing like that on it. It ain't gonna end up well. That's gonna leave me a horrendous shot in, by the way. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. The thing about playing is wind is you just have to hit the, the center of the club face. If you don't, things Contro go awry really quickly. Control the spin. Yeah. I'm aiming right and I'm gonna try to hit a little draw. Yeah, just coming back. Yeah, nice shot. First I think, top, I think, I think we call that a first top tip, I think, because it's in to win, 280 to the water, can't is hit that, in, that number. Is, is that in play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Oh, okay. I didn't see it land. Also a top tip if you want to be a scratch golfer, play with someone who's had laser eye surgery because they can literally track yeah. the ball wherever it goes. Sometimes I uh, get a little surprised that I have managed to play the golf I have with, I think I have... Like 2010 vision, so it's act I got it checked. It's actually really bad. 2010? Um, something that's bad. Wow. That's, yeah, that's not great. Yeah. But it's because I have astigmatism in one of my eyes. One of my eyes is 2020. Right, okay. So, well, actually, after I got my eyes lasered, I have better than 2020 vision. Wow. And that's not even a joke. <laughs> wow. Like, it went that well. Doctors were like, you're welcome. We've got about 110 yards left into this pin. Now, normally that's gonna be a 50 degree wedge, but I'm thinking maybe a pitching wedge, but I'm also thinking a nine nine because when it's this much into wind, it's always better to take a little bit more club to try and take the spin off it. So I'm gonna hit it lower and I'm gonna try and get it beyond the pin. Now, was it me, or as soon as I hit that, the wind stopped did the wind just stop? Some type of, there's some type of collaboration between the wind and the golf gods, I guess. <laughs> Can somebody please explain to me how a 30 to 40 mile an hour wind stops for five seconds? It's a great I strike. I know it was a great strike, 
That was one of the best wasteland shots I've played. We spoke about the importance of knowing distances to trouble. The water was 284 yards away. Mm -hmm. Micah thought, you know what? Can't carry that into the wind and you were right by two and a half yards. I mean, that's the biggest thing when it comes to driving. I mean, people always think that your putter is the most important, which I think it probably is, but I think it's probably your driver. Yeah. You, you have to be able to get yourself in the right positions off the tee in order to be able to score well. Because if you're constantly, you know, struggling and making, giving yourself those seven, eight footers for par because you're not getting up and down, it doesn't matter because you're scrambling. So I think the driver is the most important in the bag. Yeah, we'll definitely get into kind of how Micah drives the ball as well because it's, it's super impressive. Like the hang time on some of the drives yesterday was, was actually disturbing. What have you got in? I got 76. I'm um, probably going to play it like 85, but I just, I'm looking a little bit right of the pin, yeah. looking to give myself a putt. Um, cover that bunker is kind of the main goal. So I'm going to have to hack it out of here, though. Yeah, Sitting it's flying down. quite deep. Uh, well, out. Nice shot. Thanks. That nice came out shot. pretty nice. Good stuff, mate. Well, early advantage to you. Just going to need absolute maximum loft here. Now, the last kind of masterclass video that we did uh, with Frederick Lindblom had a brilliant bunker lesson. So I'm going to keep my hands level pretty much with the ball, keep the club face open on the backswing and just try and hit the sand behind the ball and really release that club up because this is down and it's onto a downslope, downwind and onto a downslope. So really got to try and generate the maximum amount of spin. Club face open around the body, shallow, open in the face, we'll whip it through. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. No, that is not bad from there. Well, I got you got a, pretty, a chance here. Got a pretty decent look at birdie here on the first. It's down grain, downwind. I feel like I could just breathe on this ball and it would get to the hole. Focus on him. I'm going to play it pretty straight. Peter's rolled pretty straight past it, so might give this one a good chance of going in. <laughs> I got ultra scared. Uh, you know what, when you were talking through that, it was like you were almost talking yourself into believing that I completely that talked was... myself out of hitting any type of a good putt. Wow. I was standing over it and I was like, I do not have the right line. So I tried to improvise in my head and uh, I did what they call an anyway. Um, I knew it wasn't gonna work and I hit it anyway. Now, hopefully I'm still the best par putter in the world. Nope. <laughs> We're just doing scratch golfer things right now. Uh, one thing I can guarantee though, is that no good round of golf starts with a birdie and that, <laughs> is just a scratch goal for certainty. That's just a fact. All right, let's see if I can make this. Barely. <laughs> nice par. I mean, it is a par, but my gosh, it looked, it looked bad once I got on the green. and 25 yards into the wind, but that is not all. Kieran, cast your eyes down this hole because, oh my word, that is not what you want to have into the wind, is it? Big lake, right in front of the green. So, 125, to be safe, we've got to be playing this, I would say, a minimum of 140 almost into thinking, this wind. Yeah. 140, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm hitting nine iron. Nine iron. Yeah. I'm going to go nine iron, and since you haven't played here, I'm going to bestow a little knowledge on you. Hit me. Um, right through the center of this green, there's this massive ridge that comes all the way back down. So there's right, a, okay. essentially there's a big backstop behind that pin. So I'm looking a little bit long and left. And if you're going to hit a little fade, then it should kind of work back towards the pin. Wow, this is an early, uh, this is an early test, isn't it? Brutal looking hole. But what a great chance for a hole in one. That's the way we need to look at it. Can't be too careful with this. Like, we do have to have a good strike. So yeah, I mean, my line, basically over the right edge of the bunker. Yeah. Trying to hit a 140 number. That's exactly where I'm looking. Great.
great shot. What a great shot. Thanks. Really good. You just hit those and you never know with this wind if it's going to stop it, if it's going to fly. I mean, I had a really solid strike there, so usually a well-struck golf ball doesn't get too, too damaged by the wind. Right, same shot. Just hopefully I can do it that successfully. Like it's all great banter though. Like it's going to be so entertaining. That's a great looking shot. Hey, that's safe. Yeah. I was definitely, uh, I was definitely bordering on more safe than not. Yeah. But with this kind of video though, it, I quite like it because it actually forces you to talk through and yeah. to think everything through. And to really like think about where, if you're going to miss this shot, where do you want to miss it? Exactly. And it's got to be left and long. Yeah, you yeah. can't be right and short. Because you've got good misses and bad misses. Yeah. The bad miss on here, I'd say is... Uh, one of the things that's interesting miss. about like really good golfers is Sahith said that if he hits 20... 25% of his shots throughout an entire round. Mm. If he hits t just 25% of them how he like actually sees them, he's extremely happy. Wow. So that means 75% of the shots he hits are like they're miss hits, they're shots that don't go where he's wanting them to. And he's top 20 player in the world. So, if you're a scratch golfer or, you know, let's say a 10 handicap, you should be you should be in awe if you have two or three two percent. three shots around. Yeah. Well, that's one. Yeah. <laughs> We're 1% up. So this is downwind, down grain. So pace-wise, I've got to be looking at this almost half. This, this, oh, the ball's already set it off on its own. Like already, this, I'm going to treat this almost like a 10-foot putt. I like that. It's going to move a little bit left at the end, I think. So she's got a target about 10 foot away. You can't roll it any better than that. That is so satisfying to see a ball rolling end over end, just perfectly. I'm not gonna to pretend to be anything other than absolutely delighted with that. You ain't gonna cap? No, it was just like, I had that target 10 foot away, hit it with that pace, let the wind and the green do the rest. Wow. I think mine is almost identical. Yeah. Uh, you gotta treat this as what, like a three foot putt? <laughs> yeah, like a three footer. Oh, I just died left. Unlucky there. Yeah, the grain pulled it a little bit. Also could have used this, uh, just a little more pace. It's, it's tricky though, isn't it? Like you're hitting a, a downhill put, yeah. downwind, down grain. I feel like if you hit that a little too hard, you could have four or five feet Easy. coming back. So third hole and there's already a decision to be made. Well, I think there is. You've already made yours, clearly. Talk us Yeah, through. so I don't know. When I step up to this hole, there's several different ways you could play it. Because there is so much room to the right, I don't see why, why not hit driver. Okay. Um, if, if you miss anything right, you're totally fine. There is some like some grass, but it's all short and there's no out of bounds right. If you hit, hit it really good, you're gonna give yourself a really good chance to make birdie. I don't care if I'm in one of those bunkers up by the green. In this wind today, I would rather have a really close shot to the green instead of trying to control something from 100 yards. Okay. That's just my thought process. You see that first patch of red bushes? It's essentially right between the bunkers. Oh, the middle of those two bunkers there. Yeah, that okay. little red. I think that's a great line if you're gonna hit a little draw. If you're gonna hit a little cut or monte it, you probably start it at the pin. I'm thinking it's safer to start it right and let yeah. the wind do something. I'm not gonna try and draw this too much. I'm just gonna try and hit yeah. it straight. And if the wind moves it, it's great. If not, it's fine. Like I say, it's a short shot in. Yeah, and that's another thing with a front pin like that. You gotta be 120 or you gotta be right up next to it. Yeah. Mm. Some people are gonna, you know, it's debatable whether or not it's the the right play, but you can play what's right for you. It, it depends on your confidence with your driver as well, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, where we're aiming to where the end of the green is, where the water is, we're talking about an 80 yard gap yeah. to actually land the driver. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. The other side of that is if you hit an iron off the tee, you're almost guaranteed to kind of hit the fair and have an approach. Yeah. And the reason I don't mind being right is because the pin is so far left and there's so much green to work with. Yeah. So even if I hit something that's kind of in a not so great position, I have a ton of green to work with. Okay, like it. Uh, it's a big bailout, but 
Well, you said it'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Just by the car path. We're gonna get up there, and he's gonna go. What are you? What are you thinking? Why? Why am I hitting driver on this hole? <laughs> I, I can see what you mean. So all that's gonna leave me. I've got a a lob wedge kind of downwind with loads of well, green to work with. So I've played this hole a lot of times, and there's been so many times where I've like tried to play it so safe and lay up. And because there's that bunker right there, if you for some reason get in that bunker, it's a really hard second shot. Yeah. So it's kind of like you have to be really confident with an iron off the tee. So it's kind of. Six one way, half a dozen the other. All right, let's see if this works out. There was a lot of talk in there. Going. And it's going literally exactly where you're aiming. Yeah, and that's fine. Probably just right of the green? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely fine. It's a, I don't know, it's a weird one. I mean, it's just, I know we've spent a bit of time chatting about that, but the stats do show. If you can get it down there far enough, even if you're in the rough with a wedge, it is better than having an iron from the fairway. Like yep. stats wise, pretty much across the board. That's one thing about hitting it far. If you can get it in play, over the course of 18 holes, you're going to pick up strokes on people. Yeah. That's just, the numbers don't lie. On the PGA Tour, every shot, is, every shot that's hit is calculated and driving distance plays a huge role when it comes to being able to score. I suppose the key there is getting point. This is a fantastic spot to be. I mean, I'm happy you told me what was up here. So now I've just got a bob wedge. I think the difficulty I've been having over in Florida is understanding how much it's going to release and check. But this is downwind, out of semi rough. Has to release a little. I'm just going to land this four or five feet on the green, let it trundle down. Oh, fantastic. Wow. I mean, Jacob and Kieran can uh, attest to this as, you know, you've been with me for a number of years now. How often do we talk stuff through and the shot comes off? Next year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start playing comps again. I'm gonna drive everybody absolutely mad. I'm just gonna stand over the ball and like just talk everything through. And you're gonna, you're gonna down to the tee. It's almost too far. I know. I was, I was, I was hoping that I would be right back there that's kind of where I was expecting to be. And then have that green to work with. You just hit it too far. I know. So now, I mean, it's a little tricky, but just trying to get something right to the front edge, landing semi-soft. Wind's a little bit. I'm gonna to try to aim right at Peter's Peter's ball. Seeing it going about two feet, landing about two feet on. Great shot. Oh, look at us. I like I like where that ends up. That is a great shot. That can be a little difficult if it doesn't, if it doesn't lay. I mean, you hit it a little bit heavy and it comes up short, or if you just catch it a groove low, then, you know, it's in the water, so. That shot there that you hit, we'll, we'll definitely get you to explain that shot, that long back swing, lazy impact position. Wes Bryan showed him that, so we'll, we'll definitely get into it. I think this is probably breaking about one ball. So I'm going left at, or right edge. Grain's pushing this way. Yeah, very good. Very good. Thanks. The reeds are a little bit off, but still managed to find the bottom of the hole. That's a solid birdie, solid birdie. Peter for two in a row now. Hmm. Wow. Go team. Thanks for coming. <laughs> this is good stuff. This is really good stuff. Hold on, mate. We just bring the best out in each other. Oh. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you absolutely wallop that like button. Let's get this to Jacob. What's your favorite number? Eight. 8.8 thousand likes after day one. Par five here. Let's be, is this aggressive? Is this just a whack? Yes. Do um, you see the bunker? Well, if you come right here, you can see the bunkers through. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are greenside bunkers. You don't want to be right of those bunkers okay. by much. That bunker right there, I think it's about 280 to carry it. The, the palm trees behind it are about right at 300. 
Okay, so to just the right of those with a smack. Yeah, those two little tiny short palm trees right here in front of us. Yeah, that's yeah. a good line to go over. Love that. Um, there, yeah, there's there's trouble right. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> that thing is staying in the air. You could have put a tracer on that before you hit it. Oh yeah. Yeah. This last week, there's something about playing with Micah. It's just I kind of think we bring the best out in each other. It's, there's there's something something there. Well, we, beef and potatoes. We're not ham and egg. We're beef and potatoes. Yeah. That was impressive. That was incredibly straight. With with your driving, I mean, you'd probably have to say, just from a pure distance standpoint, your driving's like a key to your game. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, is, is there anything like you're doing within your setup, within your swing, to allow you to get this distance, or is this just like a natural ability? Um, I mean, somewhat, yeah. I always have a pretty, a pretty wide stance, probably a little bit wider than some people, but um, the big thing with, with speed is I'm not tall. Like some people create speed because they're tall, they have levers. Mm -hmm. I create speed because I'm, I'm just fast at the bottom of mm -hmm. my swing. So um, I think being strong helps that. Having like, I do a lot of functional movements. So my fast twitch fibers are relatively good. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my speed comes from the top, you know, from this position right here to the ball. All right, okay. Because uh, it doesn't really look like I'm swinging that fast because I'm not, I'm not trying to swing hard. It's just it happens at the bottom of the swing. Um, and then using the ground efficiently. That's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. Pushing off the ground is how speed, speed is created for anyone. So, mm -hmm. yeah, pushing off the ground and speed is created at the bottom, not the top. That's cool. like the two, two things. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> wow. So. I mean, that's gonna work. It was a little toey. <laughs> you know, it's Kieran who does our tra traces, by the way. Yeah, that, that trace is gonna go out of the screen you, and come back. You're gonna have fun with that one. <laughs> right, we've got 170 left in, rather annoyingly. I absolutely ripped mine. Uh, Micah hit it so far out of the toe, and he's done me by 20 yards. It's always nice. Well done, you. Really happy for you. Nice. Um, now, 170, like, it's kind of slightly down off the right. I'm kind of thinking it's probably just an 8 iron because I, I think it's going to get knocked down quite a bit as well. Yeah. Like, when the wind's strong like this, it doesn't just push it through mm -hmm. the air. It also knocks it down. Not too bad. I got a bit lucky. A little bit pulley, but... Well, after hearing Pete talk through that shot, um, it was kind of like he just played at the number. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. And I absolutely didn't fat it, so... I got 156. <laughs> Ball's below my feet, so it's probably going to try to go to the right a little bit, but the wind should hold it. So I'm thinking a pretty straight shot here. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's a fair bit of room after that bunker on the left as well, so... Yeah, there is. Left is better than right. Oh, that's long. Sit. I flew the green. No, that's okay. A little bit long and left. Top tip. If you hit like a slightly fat toe downwind, then you can control your distance just that a little bit better. Yeah, exactly. See, that's how, that's how good Pete is. When he needs to yeah. hit it a little bit heavy, he can do it. Just got to use a bit of the turf. A little yeah. bit of turf interaction. Listen, don't teach you that at school. You got to learn that on the streets, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, is that into grain? Yeah, big time. Any top tip? When it's into the grain, I try to make sure and cut ball, ball first, and it's into the wind. So I'm just gonna hit a really standard pitch shot, try to land it about a foot on, and make sure I catch the ball first. I, I like to go uh, uh, toe. A I little bit toe, toe yeah, down. Toe down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just less contact with the ground, so you ha you know there's less friction with the if you do catch it a little heavy. So straight into the wind. So I should be able to carry this to the green, and it should stop, theoretically. Mm. Pretty good. Came out a little bit low, but I'm not I'm not upset with it. Okay, my beautifully controlled approach. An eagle. Now I think with kind of Mike's shot, it kind of came off that slope a bit, so it's going to move a bit to the right. Just depends how much that wind is going to hold it. Hold it, wind, hold it. Ah. It's always tricky when the wind's like coming yeah. that hard. 
Like how much is going to be held by just the breeze? Just an easy three birdies in a row. That's no biggie. It's a question you do get asked quite a bit. Is like, does the wind affect putts? Yes. Yes, it does. 100%. It's something you do have to take into account. It's just a back middle with a birdie though. All right, I'm going left edge. I'm hoping the wind pushes this one just it, a little it bit. It should do, yeah. shouldn't it? You'd have thought it is pretty, pretty brisk across this green, so. I pushed it. Bit of a push. Yeah. It's kind of up the hill as well, that wasn't it? So. Yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a little bit scared of it to be honest. If you miss it past the hole, it's fine. Three birdies in a row for Pete, and he takes a one-up lead. It's just an great. absolute animal out here. It's great. Well, you're used to the wind. Uh, yeah, but I'm not used to the wind, Bermuda grass, like water, alligators. What else is out here? Sun. Sun. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, the sun. Straight four, par four, get it down there as far as you can, wind into off the right, leave yourself a wedge in. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. Pins in the middle, so you can't really, if you hit this fairway, you're gonna be in a good spot. Whoa! Whoa! That doesn't mathematically seem possible. If the wind wasn't blowing, I think that ball would have been like 75 yards right, according to that. That was really weird. Um, so the ball started uh, basically at the right greenside bunker, kind of started to move left, and then just went down there to the right. I don't know if it's in the uh, fairway bunker or not. Like missing this fairway is an absolute travesty. Size of it. It's just a bash. Like that, ignore my, my ball did something very weird there. Yeah. So. Now I'm thinking just up the right side, it should draw a little bit. Yeah, very good. Very good, mate. Yeah, there's only the seven seconds of hang time there. Yeah, when the wind is blowing this hard, I'd, it'd be in my best interest to get that flight down a little bit, wouldn't it? Wow, what are you thinking here? So it's one 11 gusting hard off the right. Thinking of him like almost like a mini slice with an i9, just holding it into it. Just to, yeah, just to keep it from going 20 yards left. Ah. Oh, is it a little long? A little long, yeah. I didn't kind of pop to no spin, a bit of yeah. a flyer. I mean, the fact that it held that line was pretty impressive. Ah, uh, it's okay, it's okay. I, I got a bit lucky with the tee shot not being in the bunker, so. All right, I got 87 yards, straight into the wind. I'm probably gonna be a, I'm, I'm almost gonna be thinking 100 yards. I got 50 degree. I'm gonna try to hit a little low spinner in there into the wind and try to stop it right next to the pin. I'll be good. Ooh! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh boy. Well, that would have been something. How about something. that for a little trad? That would have been something. Hey, hey, oh. I got this one for you. Thanks, Peter. That's that's another one of the shots that I that came out exactly how I was looking. I'm going to go for a chip it. Now, it depends how you see this as an individual, but what I like to do is imagine the break, pick a landing point, and then try and judge the pace from there. So I've got basically here between there and there. So that's where I want to land this chip. So I want to, I basically want to see a landing point and then imagine how it would yeah. then progress from there. I like there. that, yeah. Because that allows me to get the feel. I mean, we're straight downwind here, so I imagine it's going to release and then go to the right. Just between those two spots, last thing I look at. There, just a bit short, but not bad. It seems to make the mo most sense to me, but also it make, it's so much easier to visualize. Just like that idea. I think it makes it much easier when you focus on a, a bigger landing area versus trying to get it close to the smallest yeah. hole. Which is there, yeah. Because your brain is like, it's hard to do that. Well done, mate. Thanks. Birdie, wow. Good par. Right, well, that's a decent par. So is that two under the place, two under? 
This in is, this wind, that is, it is insane. This is some actual decent golf here. Yeah, this is better than scratch golf right now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to retitle the whole video. <laughs> yeah, how to play better than scratch golf. I suppose he's pretty much like directly across, isn't it, from here, so. And I feel like when it comes to where, if I'm gonna miss this ball, I wanna miss it on the left side mm. versus the right. I got five iron. I'm thinking 225. What's your number in your head? Maybe a 210 shot. Okay. I just don't think the wind's like hurting. I think it's just directly across. All right. But I'm gonna have to start mine out left and slice it because I don't have the, I don't think I've got the distance with a four iron to draw it back in. Like you've got a lot more power. Yeah, I'm gonna go five iron. I'm gonna try to start it right at Jacob. It's kind of where I'm seeing. We'll see if it comes out like that. Came out of it. Sit down. Oh, no. It was so much bad about that. I think it's probably in the water, unfortunately. It was so uncommitted on where I wanted to start that ball. Was that definitely more like just a mental? That was the one 100% mental. I think um, something that really separates like, we're decent golfers, absolutely. Yeah. I think you're a better golfer than me personally. But I think once you get to that like, next level it's the commitment that they have to every shot mm -hmm. is unquestionable yeah. like they all they almost manage to just like avoid doubt yeah and it's like such an amazing skill to have yeah exactly yeah that was purely mental it's kind of like right at the last second i just kind of bailed on it all right let's see what you got here okay so i'm just gonna hit a low four cutting it in wow. that was a beautiful strike Oh, great shot. Thank you. Wow. That's a much more comfortable shot for me. Yeah. Because I wind off the left, all I got to do is hit like a tiny fade. I know yeah. it's going to come back. If this hole was like, let's say this was reversed and there was like water all down the left and like the pin was down there, I'd be a bit more, a bit more twitchy on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that ball did go in the water. Um, took a little drop here as the hazard line. Pretty standard pitch. Try to get this a couple, probably, actually with this wind, I probably want to carry it at least halfway there. Um, yeah. It's not really going to spin much, so. I suppose it's a weird one, it? Because it's kind of heavy rough, but it's into wind and you're on an upslope. Yeah. So it's not going to have spin, it's just going to have It's going to stop. And yeah. stop, yeah. So just try to get it moving and towards the pin and hopefully it gets closer, goes in. Yeah, pretty Go. good. All right. Pretty good. Difficult to judge that. Yeah. But I, got a I got a bogey putt. Could be massive. <laughs> this would be. In the context of this little match, this could be huge. If I drop a 30 foot bomb for Birdie on here, coming off the right, wind's going to probably push it a little bit more as well. It's weird, there's some putts you just stand over and you can kind of see what's going to happen. I think I can see what's happening here. Hmm. There's a little work left there. I didn't see that. I did not see that. That was pretty aggressive. That was aggressive. I like it, but. Are you an aggressive putter or do you like to see it die in the hole? I think like subconsciously, I like to see it dying in the hole, but I leave a, I leave a lot of putts short because of that. So yeah. I'm working on trying to get like 13 inches to two feet past of like getting mentally be able to hit it there because I make a lot more putts when I hit them a little harder. Yeah. A lot of times I'll have the right line, but just not hit it hard enough. Go. See, just like that. Yeah. I had a good line, but I just, it comes off a line because I don't have enough speed. That's it's, a double, back to even par. It's tricky because I'm the same. I might put there, as soon as I start to see a ball like go past the hole, I get like, oh. Yeah. I don't, I don't like it. I like to see it die in as well. It feels but... like it's going to like fall off the edge or something. It's yeah, like, yeah, which is, which is stupid it's really. So weird. Because if you think about like the put afterwards, even if it's two foot past, yeah. we're not going to miss yeah. a two foot put. It's... You have all of the advantage in your favor if you hit it by because you see the line everything yeah. it's a bit to do with like personality as well yeah like we're not aggressive personalities so yeah. like until i need to be <laughs> so we'll see it we'll see if pete can get this one right see if i can get it to the hole <laughs> yeah great putt thank you that's a really good par that's it's big on that hole that's on that hole that's good big. as well two under plays level yeah good that's a really good par 
Thank you. On this hole in this wind, I got my work cut out for me. Well, we just we just had a little uh, chat about we're technically ruining like how to play scratch golf video. So I think it's really good of you. But you just thought, you know what? It's gonna yeah. get back there. Back to scratch. Oh, yeah. Come on, Pete. <laughs> Let's get back to scratch. Come on, guys. For the sake of the video. <laughs> Straight away hole. Tricky though. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but if you're gonna hit a little fade, it, it sets up perfectly. You just kinda aim at the bunkers on the left. Just let it drip. Yeah, it's 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 really, really not that complicated. Ooh, it's got a fade. Hmm. Gotta throw those palm trees. Yeah, it's unfortunately there's water behind them, behind that little ridge. Should have asked about that. Oh, that was stupid. I mean, it could be up. To be honest, I was like... It started off nice and it just didn't keep going. Well, you know what I thought? I thought there, I'm gonna try and hit a cut, but if I miss left, that's my bailout, because I know there's danger right. Mm, I should have told you there's tr danger on both sides. I should have checked. Ugh. That's a huge, that's definitely a, bit, a... That's an error. Not a scratch golfer move there. I'm gonna try to hit a low cut here. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'd love to see it. I'm gonna try to go off of that center bunker and just try to hit a low cut. I got it teed down really low, so that usually promotes a ball flight to the right. Yeah, a lower ball, lower tee kind of just helps the club go a little bit more across because you gotta yeah, hit. Yeah, you have to be down, down that way. It's not a long hole, so it's not like you have to hit something crazy deep. Nice, real nice. Perfect. That, was, that came out really good. Yeah, perfect, mate. Very good. Right, well, let's hope for my sake that is not in the H2O. So for the sake of the match, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> 180. Ball was in the water, so this is my third shot. Ball's going to be above my feet. Wind is off the right, so it's going to move to the left. So I'm going to start this right edge of the green. Five iron. I'm going to try and keep it a little bit lower. Hopefully that's got enough to cover. The wind's kind of a bit weird. It's kind of switching off the right and into Oh, that is a beautiful ball flight. Just short. Just short. Couldn't quite bring myself to smack a four there. It's okay. I Not mean, bad. get up and down for a bogey, but Mike is in A1 there. All right. 147 for me. It's a perfect position to a little back, a little bit to the right pin. I have eight iron. No, it's actually just more across. Doesn't that flag look like it's blowing that way? That flag looks like it's blowing straight down wind. Yeah. Or is it toward us? I'm gonna stick with my club here and see what happens. Oh, be good. Nice shot. Mm. Maybe a little bit long, but I like it. I like that. Well played. That was a good shot. Thank you. That was a good shot, that mate. I think this is actually gonna do that much. Still imagining it trying to go in the hole, like the, the small misses is better, but definitely don't want to drop two strokes. Go, go, go. go. Oof. Well, had a little hiccup here in the last couple of holes. Weird, weird stroke. That. Well, you think that was the wind or did you just not hit it? It, it was a weird stroke. Like, yeah, I kind of came back on the inside and tried to draw it. <laughs> yeah, a bit. <laughs> That didn't feel very good. Oh God, we could have another two shot Gosh, swing. Gosh, can we have another two shot swing? Oh, this would be three shots. Maybe swing. three shots. Yeah. I got that feeling I'm gonna make this. You might as well have a double then me to have a double that'd be. Left edge. Probably not good. It'd be good for the match, but how are you seeing it? Uh, I think it's left edge. And a firm little lip out. Oh. Wasn't gonna leave that one short. I think that was too firm. A little bit. <laughs> you just need to be a bit more gentle with your putts. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Right, if I hold this, I think this is like a massive for, for momentum. I've seen you hit a lot of really good par putts, but I don't know if I've seen you hit many bogey putts. Just think at the very last second, it's just going to move it like a smidge to the right. So I'm just going to go inside left. Too firm. Mm. Oh, we're both at it. <laughs> we both left a couple short and now we're hitting them the, the correct distance by. 
Well, that is a double, and that is back to level par. <sighs> a key, though, if you want to shoot good scores, is just leaving, leaving that hole in the pass. Can't do anything about it. Got to move on and try and get another birdie. But my that, God, that is annoying. The thing that makes golf so hard for me, in my opinion, you work really hard to make birdies. You get a couple under par, and then you have one bad swing, and the next thing, it's not even hard to get back to like even par. So it's... <laughs> Golf is, it's so difficult to get under par mm -hmm. and it's incredibly easy just to give it back. Yeah. Like that's why golf is such a kind of hard sport. It's just, it just doesn't give you anything for free. Oh, well, we could rack up bogeys. Yeah. I'd be such a happy like 18 handicapper. I think I'd be a lot happier if I was an 18 handicapper. Just go round bogeys. Thinking of driving the green here? Um, in my head, yeah. 400 yards, give it a bit of beans. You'll be able to get there. I've gotten real close before. This wind is, it's the right wind to do it if I'm gonna do it. I just need to hit it out of the center of the face. I don't, I don't think I can hit the toe ball and get there. It's nice that we're having that discussion that you might be able to get there with a pure strike though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not quite a normal conversation that you had there. That carried everything? I don't know. The water kind of goes up. Oh, really? I'm not gonna lie. I was trying to give that one a little bit extra. You're very like deliberate pre shot routine, Mike. Are you, are you looking at anything in particular, trying anything in particular? Um, I'm, always, I'm always trying to be like very target oriented. So I'm trying to think less golf swing and more target when okay. I'm on the golf course. Just trying to react to that. Just very reactionary. Cause okay. as soon as I start controlling it, then it, if I'm trying to like be technical and make sure I'm square and like all these things, I will hit it extremely poorly. Okay. But I try to think about only my target. Ooh. That was hit well, Peter. That's a really good shot. Thank you. That one looked like it had some speed on it. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I, I do enjoy playing with you, Mike, but I always feel a little bit inferior when we finish. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna what is lie. kind of your like top speed? Because you were doing some speed training for a while. I, I mean, I can top out at 130. Oh yeah. But issue is there's almost no difference for me between swinging 120 and 130 because mm. my strike wanders so oh, much. Yeah. Like, yeah. it just seems to drop right off a cliff. So if yeah. I can keep it at 120, I'm, yeah. I'm happy. 120 is fast though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. The way he's walking, he's about 15 yards past the pin there. He's got it. <sighs> right. Uh, so I've got 72 yards left in. So I've hit mine like 330, which is fine. It's just ridiculous. Imagine having that speed and power on tap. So I'm gonna go pretty straight at it. I'm gonna have to play this about like 65 yards. Wind's gonna push it. It's gonna have one jump on that first bounce and then just needs to grab. Pin's quite close to the front. Go, 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 go. Just not very good. I, don't know if I'm just lacking a little bit of H2O here. Making some poor, poor decisions. Were you trying to hit a little spinner there? I was, but also at the same time, look, the pin's at the front, which makes it difficult. Look how much green there is after the pin. Yeah. Oh, Pete. Those feel on. like kind of, you just want to hit them again, don't you? Yeah. Uh, uh, you hit yours 400 yards here? Uh, yeah. I think it probably bounced at the front of this kind of waist bunker and it rolled just past pin high. I'm gonna play this kind of like a bunker shot. It's really, you could, you can like, you could hit it and pick it or you can kind of play it like a bunker shot. And I always just feel a little more comfortable opening the face up and swinging hard. Oh, uh, go. Uh. Same thing Peter did from this angle. Not shots I practice every day. Now I'm trying to get up and down for par. Um, not the most ideal situation after that drive. Sit. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Driving is important, but short game is also important because I hit a 400 yard drive and I have 10 feet for par. Yeah, very poor pitch for me. The more, the more I look at that pitch, the more I'm like, wow, that was, that was a truly, truly awful shot. Um, and I'll laugh myself a tricky chip. I've got to land this so precisely on the front of the green and then just let it roll out. Can't really pitch it in the fringe round here because Bermuda's so unpredictable. 
So ball just towards the front foot, open that face a touch, let those hands release the club. Got my landing spot. Wow, we're making a mess of this. Not oh, our best stuff there, Pete. We are making an absolute pig's ear of this. I'm trying to be like so precise with it. it. It feels like it becomes like that because of the wind. And I think some of that's probably subconscious. Hmm. What's the, mm, I didn't really see that, so. That is a bogey. That is a double bogey and a bogey to take me to one over par. Playing such steady golf and then boom! Got slapped in the face. Oh, a whole big fat doo-doo hitting the fan. So I have a par putt to take a one-up lead with. Going down the last. One hole to play. And it's a, it's a very gettable par five. So clutch it up here. Clutch. Clutch put that. I thought uh, I was going to leave it short again. That feels, you know, after hitting that drive, I just, to get away with a par because of that second shot and third shot. I mean, does it feel good? This is the saving grace right here. The, the biggest eraser grant like the ball. The final hole. <sighs> Comes down to this, doesn't it? Really simply. I am one over par, Micah is level like a good scratch golfer should be. Par five, straight back into the teeth of the wind. Still get do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. I think for both of us, we got enough, enough speed and distance to get there. You can hit either a draw or cut here, honestly. It's pretty wide open, isn't it? So. It's, uh, it's a, lot of, a lot of room. I'm gonna try to hit a little draw. I like, I like that. That suits me a little better right now. Still wanna try to get it out there so I can get home in two. I'm gonna go just off the left side of that bunker and try to draw one back in the fairway. Just like this match has suddenly got a little bit more tense again. <sighs> oh, so annoyed at that point. Are you feeling tense? Because I'm feeling nice and relaxed. This wind has got me very calm. Uh, it's got me pretty wistful, if I'm being honest. Wistful, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's the word we came up with. Yeah. Well, we, we didn't come up with it, but. Not one of ours, no. <laughs> <gasps> well, yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> top 10 worst drives. I've topped some, um, but I, I hit that. Actually, to be honest, I don't even know where I hit it. It, it. it seems like I hit a bug because there's like this, there's like some like bug guts on my driver. What? <laughs> it was like, it, it was like little, looked like bug residue. You squished the bug? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, that drive went, went down faster than it went up. Oh, it's just missed that tree. Wow. It's like, it's like we're trying to... Do you want this? What? Should, should I have this hole? Do you want this hole? Should <laughs> yeah, I have this exactly. hole? Do you want the game? Should I have this game? Like, do you want... If my ball is anywhere remotely clear, I'm going to go for it in two. Trust me, I'll hit driver again. Wow. I just want to... Who's the god of the winds? Any idea? Whoever it is, thank you. <laughs> Last little minute. I had a plan, and the plan was to hit it to the perfect distance so that I could have a full driver off the deck to end this video with a bang. Just enough room to squeeze this right by those trees and let it trickle on up there. Oh my God, be good. Should be right near pin high. I think that's better than I would have done had I had a normal drive and then had a seven iron in. Are you, uh, are you trying to pretend that you planned this from the start? Yeah, I'm trying. Is it working? <laughs> I'm happy for the socials and I'm happy for the match that everyone got to see that. Personally, I'm distraught. <laughs> Such an awkward one because it's sat down um, to 240. It's one of those where I reckon if I like hit a hybrid and it got a flyer, that'd be like perfect. If it doesn't get a flyer, it's going to be short. So I'm going to hit a three wood. Just try and keep it a little bit low. Let it drift a touch. So I'm going to aim this basically between the tree there and the pin and just let it drift back. Ooh. It took an unbelievably good kick. I know. Do you think about myself sure? I'm not sure. That just... was a very good golf shot. I was relying on a little bit of ground help. The first bounce seemed to get it, but a bit of an upslope there, isn't there? I, I, it was a great shot. Like, if it's 
If it's good, brilliant. If not, I'm still happy. All right, I'm in a bit of a situation. I mean, Peter's up there. He has 30 feet for eagle, and I'm now, I'm 54 yards short of the pin um, trying to get up and down for birdie. So I need to get this close and make birdie so that I can hopefully secure a win here for myself. Go, 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 go. It's okay. I can't tell, but by Peter's reaction, I think it's pretty good. Well, I think stats might show here if I too put a good half. Right to left, heavy. I think end. I'm going to need to make this to win. Peter's going to whip it around. He's pretty a great putter, and he's Jacob's a really good two putter. Standing there. So I imagine that he's pretty much locked in for birdie. If not, give this a run for eagle. Okay. I'm not very much on it. Oh, it's going to hang out, and it's going to be way short. Go, 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 go. Uh, what okay. a line. line is actually pretty good. Oh, what a line. Oh, that would be so good. What's the number, rule, number one rule in golf? Never, ever leave an eagle putt short. It makes me feel any better. I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying to. Uh, I know the feeling. And it's low it's again. Low. All of that to miss it by a large margin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That thing dovetailed. Please tell me one of you got that. Wow. I mean, I made it, but my gosh, it went in by just... Uh. All right, Peter. This right here to tie the match. The biggest putt of your career. Mm. We both did the same exact thing. So much swing on that. Uh. So much swing. Mm. Well, you know what? Some serious wind. That was fantastic. Solid round of golf for both Scratch of us. Scratch golf. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah really I, I well mean, done. even par. What'd you say at the beginning? Even par was the goal. Yeah. I got away with even par. I mean, I think in, double. in this wind, even par is good. Yeah. Um, I, and it feels like a success in my mind. I feel like I've maybe, I think I've maybe let myself down. Probably let my family down a little bit as well. But mm. guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you've learned something as well. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe to Micro as well. And we'll leave a playlist to do the Florida videos we've done. And we are now going to have a bit of a rematch on your yep. channel, aren't we? So let's go. Let's continue this good golf because with this wind, that was actually really solid. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Peter. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. Thank you to everybody behind the camera. And uh, until next time, maybe I'll come to Europe. Oh, please do. That'd be awesome. I'm going to wait till it gets warm though. Uh, whew, <laughs> might, be quite, might be quite a bit of time. <laughs>